for Prescott. What a run. The intercepted. Wow. Touchdown. Capacity at Brian Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, 101,821. Given the anticipation of this kickoff, we might squeeze a few extra bodies inside. This is indeed Sweet Home, Alabama. you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. Today, the much-anticipated matchup between the top-ranked Mississippi State Bulldogs and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Take a look at the SEC West standings as we approach kickoff here. Mississippi State with a half-game lead over the Crimson Tide, and you see those who follow college football playoff standings much more significant in the long run the bulldogs still on top oregon florida state tcu has jumped over alabama but there is so much more football to be played hi once again everybody Vern lundquist along with gary danielson our pleasure to welcome you to what we call t-town alabama is used to playing on this big stage 23 sec titles 15 national championships the contrast could not be greater mississippi state has one sec title in its resume that occurred when I was one year old. Uh, yet here they That'd be are. That's a long again. time ago. Yeah, well, that's a, that was kind of my turn. Uh, take a look at this. Mississippi State, deservedly number one. Now, this might be the biggest game ever for them. And, and it should be. And, and you know what's really good for them, though? They're the underdogs. I think they're relishing looking to this game. They have to beat the bully, the best program in the SEC. And I think they're looking forward to it. Well, and they've got a couple of offensive stars who must play big today. Absolutely have to in this offense the spread attack against Alabama you have to run the ball and you have to run the ball with both spread backs Dak Prescott of course he's gonna to have to throw the ball but his running ability to make first downs is huge and then you got a guy in Josh Robinson who can run the ball between the tackles yet make the big play in the spread the spread means it's gonna be a different game for Alabama and it means those secondary players those guys that covered like last week and took on the tailback now have to make the plays in space Collins and Jones they have to now show why they're great athletes but more importantly in this game tackle in space Alabama we were there last week they won in overtime a great drive to tie the game Blake Sims led that drive is there any carryover from that absolutely I, I mean when you got your quarterback coming off a drive like that all his teammates all of the Alabama nation watching that happen you have to believe as good as you've been at home coming into this game and his stats are obvious he's much better here he even feels better about himself and I think he's gonna have to be because he's facing a defense in this game for Mississippi State that's seen it all you know 11 seniors for Mississippi State start in this game seven of them are on defense they're men they're not, they're not guys that really didn't do anything. These are men ready for this game. Mississippi State, 9-0, and yet they're underdogs here. Who do they look to? They, they watch their coach. Follow their coach. I look. He looked him in the eye. I have no doubt about this. He's going to come into this game and said, I beat him before. I know how to do it. We can beat him again. Brian Denny filled to the rim. And the pom-poms being waved in unison to a drum beat. And here comes Alabama. They have won their last 13 by 21 or more. One loss this year, that was on the road at Ole Miss. And in the middle of the Mississippi State University football team, their head coach in his sixth year, Dan Mullen.
This is some scene. And let's go down to Allie, who is live with Coach Nick Saban. Coach, you play your best football at home, but in recent history, we've seen you struggle the week after the physical LSU game. How do you expect your team to respond today? Well, it's up to every guy. You know, now's the time to be your best as a football player. I mean, these kind of challenges you work for all year long and everything you do to get ready for the season. So these are the kind of games that great competitors ought to love to play in. So everybody's got to be responsible to get yourself ready to play their best. You said you'd evaluate, evaluate running back T.J. Yeldon in pre game how much can we expect to see him today he was good he'll start good thanks coach thank good luck. you Allie thank you that's a big player right there for this Alabama office TJ Yeldon is best in their screen game and he picks up the blitz is the best an important player for the Alabama offense TJ Yeldon fumbled when he was injured late in the game last week coach Dan Mullen with Allie when we come back SEC on CBS is sponsored by New York Life Insurance Company. Hyundai. Bud Light. And by Chick-fil-A. We welcome you back to Bryant Denny Stadium. And now we take you to first on the field presented by Microsoft Surface. Here's Allie with Coach Dan Mullen. Coach, you came here six years ago to build a championship program. The fans have waited over a century for a team like this. Is this the biggest game in school history? I don't know about it. It's the biggest game this week for us. So, uh, but, uh, you know, our guys are ready. We had a great uh, great week of practice. And uh, should be an atmosphere, great atmosphere. This is what college football is all about. What will it take to win? Uh, we got to play really well. We got to execute at a very, very high level out here on the field today. We got to play hard for 60 minutes. Thanks, Coach. Good Thank luck. Thank you. I'm, I'm not kidding when I say this. I went back and watched his game against Alabama and he was offensive coordinator of Florida. It's going to be wide open. I'm not kidding. Wide open offense for Dan Mullen. He's aggressive in big games. Well, this series has been dominated by Alabama. They did have to vacate the 2005 win. They've won the last six matchups. And uh, Mississippi State ranked in the country but underdogs today Alabama won the toss and they have elected to receive Logan Cook will kick off and Christian Jones number 22 is the deep man along with DeAndre White and that's good to know that DeAndre White is on the field sure is he had a big rap Thursday pulled a hamstring in practice Christian Jones. Nice return. And the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. Ah, oh, good. Cal got his burp in. Blake Sims. You know, it's really so interesting. We are talking to the coaches. They can't even explain why Blake Sims is so much better at home than he is on the road. They're as perplexed as every one of these 100,000 people watching the game. Uh, his uh, offensive coordinator, Lane Kiffin, trying to talk to us yesterday, said, I, I, don't, I don't get it. Amari Cooper opens behind Blake Sims. Comes a little swing pass out to the left. Out of bounds, and we continue with our lineups. Robinson, the true freshman at left tackle, Quanjo Kelly. Jalston Fowler, there is a chance that TJ Yeldon can't go the full game. Fowler might move to tailback. DeAndre White is on the field. TJ Yeldon looked pretty good on that one. He did, got to the edge. Just taking the ball outside zone, inside handoff, and TJ runs through one play, one tackle, excuse me, and gets to the edge. Third down five. Cooper, top of the screen, guarded by Jamerson Love, number five.
Sims takes off. There's a missed tackle, but Sims is one yard short of the first down. That was Beniquas Brown, number 42 for Mississippi State. Well, the matchup, even despite the 5 for 17 performance on third down by Alabama last week against LSU, they still convert 50% of the time, roughly 53. So half the time Alabama converts, Mississippi State stops third down plays two out of three times. They won the first battle of the day. Here's J.K. Scott, the freshman out of Denver, who has a gaudy percentage for the year, 47.7. And Fred Ross was back to return. Peering into the sun. And nailed. Landon Collins. Oh, boy. Well, Landon Collins has been doing this for his two years at Alabama. He broke in as a freshman, made a name for himself. Now he still does it. Plus, he makes a lot of those plays from the secondary just like that. Dak Prescott and the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. They load up with three wide to the left. One in the slot to the right. Four down for Alabama. Quick flip out into the flat. That goes to Jamion Lewis, who is back in the lineup for the first time in five weeks. The Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And get ready to read them fast, <laughs> because I'm telling you, this is going to be hyper speed by this Mississippi State offense with this quarterback, Dak Prescott. Takes off on a running play, gets a block. He's a yard short of the first down. Tackle made by Jaron Reed. We continue quickly with the lineup. <laughs> Clausel Malone, Dave Beckwith, Darunya Wilson, former Mr. Basketball in Alabama, leading receiver, and Jamion Lewis has been out with an injury for the last five games. He is a, a really vital cog offensively. See Josh Robinson alongside Prescott. Third and one. It'll be Prescott. Struggles. Let's see where they mark it. Good stop up front by Alabama. He's going to get a good spot. Again, that's what the ability to run your bigger quarterback inside can do is make when the spread, it's hard to pick up those third and one and twos. I'm not sure if he got that. To tell you the truth, it was very, very close. They will measure. Nobody plays the two great gap. What I mean by two gap for a defensive lineman is they stand up the guy in front of them. These four right here just get their hands out in front and then push off at the last second like a bench press and try to catch whoever has the ball. Now here's the stretch. Oh boy. Just to go back, Vern, about how aggressive Dan Mullen is. I followed him for a long time at Utah under Urban Meyer against Alabama in the SEC championship game and the national championship game. All the MOs are the same. In fact, I watched two tapes. He's wide open with his quarterback. Guy like playing chess against a guy who uses his queen early. He uses his quarterback early. First down, 10. Prescott, right side. Malcolm Johnson, the tight end, makes the grab. Well, Dan Mullen was uh, an aide to Urban Meyer against uh, Pitt in the Fiesta Bowl at Utah, and then to take a look at the other three. Yeah, and, he, and he does. And now he finally has a quarterback that fits his aggressive play calling. But again, he's doing it against the best here. Alabama's defense is the best at adjusting to these type of offenses. Prescott takes off and bulls his way for another apparent first down. Xavier Dixon, number 47, with the stop. Give him a crease, even though it was a pass play call, the quarterback is running the ball. I would suspect, now remember, in the pass against these spread offenses, Johnny Manziel had like 90 yards rushing against them. 
Cam Newton in 2010 had two, only 39 rushing against him. There's Prescott on the keeper. I, I think Dak needs at least 90 yards rushing in this football game. Do you? Yep. Well, he leads the uh, nation with four games. Take a look at the defensive unit now. Cyrus Jones, boy, he was targeted last week by LSU, and there's an expectation that Prescott might test him again. Here's a blitz. Reggie Ragland coming. Tipped. Oh, my gracious. Ashawn Robinson bobbled it. Yeah, it was a very poor throw by Dak Prescott on a screen. It's about a four-yard pass. He threw it much too hard. Josh Robinson had no chance for it. The best opportunity was by Robinson. Look at how hard he threw that ball. No way he could catch it. And so third down and four. Ashawn Robinson just did miss. I think footsteps. Again, that's your big running back trying to handle a pass to the outside. On that play, Mississippi State red hot. Two linebackers came, but Alabama played it and backed it up properly with a safety to pick up the running back. A tough play for a running back, especially Josh Robinson. Good defense by Alabama. Held him short both times and then got him off the field. And that will lead to Devin Bell, number 40, the putter. Christian Jones is deep, calls for the fair catch and grabs it at the 22-yard line. <laughs> 35-yard punt, nothing on the return. So no body blows in the first possession for each team. between Mississippi State and Alabama. They are the two closest SEC schools in terms of mileage. Only 84 miles between the two. Matter of fact, the Mississippi State Bulldogs took a bus over. They did not leave Starkville until 11 this morning. And uh, that's about as close as it gets when you take a look at the total number of wins on the second line, SEC titles, and the national titles. Great disparity there, but Mississippi State having won 12 in a row. Matter of fact, they've been undefeated for 365 days. The last loss was to this Alabama team in Starkville a year ago. Sims back. Looks deep. Fires it. Wade Ardarius. Flag is thrown. Ardarius Stewart. Number 13. Jay Hughes with the interference. They brought in Stewart, a blazer, and used Cooper as a decoy, very That's well defended. Number and then right at the end, Hughes cut penalty. him off. Automatic he just didn't down. trust himself, and Jay Hughes gets the 15-yard penalty. But in that case, when you're trying to chase down that ball, it's very simple up here. You see the ball, and you know it's going to be underthrown, but on the field, you don't. 15-yard penalty is better than a 75-yard touchdown. Even I think Yeah, that. there you go. Yep, yep. <laughs> with my astute inside knowledge of this game. Incomplete, but a foul, and Jouston Fowler is in front of T.J. Yeldon now, the fullback. Old-fashioned draw play. And Yeldon bangs his way up to the 45. We go back to New York for this Ford update. Here's Adam. All right, Vern, here's how it ended in the swamp. After Florida started OT with a field goal, South Carolina's Dylan Thompson running it in for the win, ending the Gators' SEC East hopes. Back to you. All right, here's a pass to DeAndrew White. <laughs> Worth another look. Nice little crossing pass from a real tight formation. And one of the things that Lane Kiffin raved about is how good Blake Sims is on the run, especially those little play action passes. This one comes near side to Amari Cooper. His second catch of the game defensively for Mississippi State. Take a look at the right side of the screen and look at all those seniors. And then the lead guy is a, a junior, Bernardrick. McKinney, pressure this time, and 
Fowler couldn't get there. Yeah, and McKenney was right on that play, read it all right. He's one of those non-seniors who's played a lot of football. But you know, this Mississippi State defense, if they have an Achilles heel, and it's their pass defense, they're last in the league. Now, for a while, the Mississippi State people were saying, oh, no, no, those were garbage yards. Those were late in the game when we had a big lead. And that's kind of true. But then the Kentucky game happened, and then the red flags went up. I believe Alabama believes that they're best throwing the ball in the perimeter, and they think that's the weakness of this defense. Third down four. Tavez Calhoun guarding Amari Cooper on this play. They'll hand it off to Yoda, who is. That's what I say. Those guys rocked. are men. Those guys are men down there. A.J. Jefferson with the tackle then, number 47. I mean, there, these defensive linemen for Mississippi State do not worry a lot about getting upfield. They take on people at the point of attack, and they're big, stout guys. And apparently, Alabama will go for it on fourth and five. They are four of seven on fourth down conversion. Oh, brother. Now fourth and ten. Yeah, yeah. And Cam that, Robertson, the freshman on the left tackle start. spot. 74 the offense, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. And that's left tackle Cam Robinson. We really didn't talk about him enough last week, Vern. An amazing performance by a young football player. Only practiced one day all week going into that LSU battle on the road. Yet did not make mental mistakes and played the whole football game. An outstanding performance by a great young football player. Now he was injured in the Tennessee game. First true freshman to start at that left tackle spot for Alabama since Andre Smith in 2006. Here's Scott, the freshman. Fred Ross will let this one go. Perfect. Oh, my goodness. Denzel Duvall was down there on special teams, a starting linebacker. 33-yard punt. But they have pinned the Bulldogs at their own five time call. We invite you to get the fastest scores and updates from Mississippi State, Alabama, and all teams with the CBS Sports app. The fastest app for sports fans. Download the CBS Sports app now. From their own five, second possession for Mississippi State. They have not run the ball well in recent years against this Crimson uh, And that graphic proves it right there. Their lowest total for the year this season was versus Arkansas, 128 yards rushing. It's tough to run it against Alabama, though. They start out by saying, you ain't running on us. Josh Robinson, the 5'8", running back, gets, no, it's play action. Prescott drills it. Incomplete. Cyrus Jones. Fred Brown was the intended receiver. Well, you go play action pass, and there's the matchup. I mean, Cyrus Jones has been picked on every game since the Texas A&M opener when Mike Evans burned him. Everybody else keeps looking at that tape, and Cyrus Jones keeps knocking down passes. <laughs> Here's Robinson. Dane's safe to This to safety. Is good be it. Yep. Safety. Geno Smith was first there, number 24. What a call by this man. He put the slot blitz right into it, played the tendency, and put the star position player over the slot on a blitz right into the play. That's why they work 100 hours a week. Coming right off here, you're going to see the blitz from the safety. He runs right into it, then Josh needs to take that inside. And when he bounces it outside, it's a play and bounce, and DePriest ends up cleaning it out. Another look, Gary. 
Yeah, you can see it's going to come right off the edge. Right there is going to be making the play. I think it's Geno Smith makes the play and then bounced out. It was bad motion, too, on the play. This did not look right for Mississippi State. Was not handled well, and it cost them two points. Kirby Smart still coaching. Seventh year as the defensive coordinator with Nick Saban. Was it 27 or 24? I still don't know who came off the slot I believe that time. 24. Was it Geno Smith? Yeah, That's yeah, who I thought yeah. at first. Yep. Yeah. That's a perfect defensive call, and you see the motion was just not right by Fred Ross. He should have been in front of that play. I really have to say that that's a little bit of Dak Prescott's fault. He needs to call that guy a little bit farther, and then Blake Wazell wasn't on the right page. That was just a bad play all the way around for Mississippi State. And so the free kick will be coming from the 20-yard line taken by Logan Cook. What a, what a call by Kirby Smart. You know, I, you got to just say, these coaches earn their money. Now, it's a lot of money, I'll say that. But they earn their money, and he had that one dialed perfectly. Christian Jones at the 19. Out near the 39. We'll see where they uh, ultimately spot the ball. T JT Gray, number 45, with the tackle. So, little jersey change there for Josh Robinson. Getting a little coaching as well. Yeah. I, I, I really don't think he, he was that the play was designed to bounce outside. And when you do that, you put your whole play. You know, you got Clausel trying to do one thing. It's just... The play. Hey, Alabama's tough enough to run on anyway. Yep. Then Kirby Smart has the right call, and then you run it wrong. All three performed a disaster. Derrick Henry is the tailback now. And here's Sims looking over at uh, Lane Kiffin. And off uh, Henry. Derrick Henry, the biggest of the backs. Of course, they lost Kenyon Drake. Fractured leg early in the season. Henry listed at 241 pounds. Second down four. Comes left. Got it. First down. He runs right through Zach Jack Jackson's tackle that time. Zach's one of those hybrid safety linebacker types. Puts it right into the secondary. Richie Brown is in on the play. Mississippi State plays a lot of players. They try to get their players rested and fresh for the fourth quarter. But there's been a little bit of concern at Mississippi State because the 1B guys have been giving up a lot more yards than the 1A guys. First down, 10, Alabama. Cooper, they're playing off of him now. Wide right to the top of the screen, hand off Henry. Two nothing here. Let's see what's going on elsewhere. Back to Adam in our New York studios. Now, Vern, we start this one on a freeze. The Jayhawks have 12 men on the field in a visit from number four TCU. Trevon Boykin gets picked off by Jaquan Shepard for the touchdown, but Kansas gets flagged for too many men on the field. However, they still lead 13-7 on the team ranked ahead of the tie. Hmm. And there's Henry going around the right side. Ryan Brown. A note of absolutely no consequence whatsoever. My first telecast for CBS. Was TCU at Kansas. All right. Do you remember that? Who won? <laughs> <laughs> TCU did. FA Drive was the head coach. I, was gonna, I thought you were going to say they hit a jumper to win Kansas on. <laughs> <laughs> Allen Fieldhouse yes. is a tough play. Place for visitors. Third down five. Oh, what a throw. DeAndrew White. Yeah. Why don't you take a run at this? Why is he so much better here? 
I, I really have no idea, but I will say on this one, Vern, he showed patience. It was a zone coverage, and one of the questions I think Mississippi State wanted to find out about Blake was, could he read the defenses? Would he stare down receivers? Could the zone kind of morph to where he tried to throw the ball? That time, he did it exactly perfect. That was a gain of 11, and T.J. Yeldon back on the field, number four. He comes left. Oh, boy. Looked pretty good on that one. Well, last week, you recall, if you were watching us, late in the game, here's the injury, to Gary. Yeah, there's a minute, what, 13 to go in the game. Yep. We kind of said, boy, the pain caused it. But it was bailed out by the quarterback. You know, I think in this game, Blake Sims bailed out the two stars, T.J. Yeldon and Amari Cooper. Cooper had the drops. Yeldon had the fumble. Number six bailed them both out. Had a brilliant... Nice. Brilliantly executed drive with 50 seconds and no timeouts left. That uh, led to the tie. And then he hit the Andrew White in the overtime for a touchdown. McKinney is down. See a new feature of this game so far that we haven't seen a lot of from Alabama as McKinney limps off is the quick snap toss. Now, you know, one of the things that you watch Mississippi State, they're not like LSU. LSU lines up their defensive ends very wide, and it's tough to get to the edge. Mississippi State takes on more, they call it a seven technique instead of a nine technique, about a foot and a half tighter. And it looks like Alabama wants to see if they can get outside. And off to Yeldon. Down near the 20. Now let's go back to that last play and watch McKinney, number 50. There he is. Let's see what happens. It's like he just tripped, didn't he? Over the back yeah. of somebody's leg. He's back. Fired the right side, Amari Cooper. Good defensive job by Jamerson Love, number five. Now that's what I'm talking about, a guy that's played a lot of football, Jamerson Love, one of the seven seniors. Vern noted it, we talked about it. I mean, he's seen, let's just guess here, um, eight SEC games for three years. He's probably seen 200 of those plays. Yeah. He understands how to set up the blocker, get around the blocker, and wrap up, not trying to make the big hit. That's what you have to do. Third down seven, just shy of the 20 yard line. Two nothing, this is the drive following the safety. Sims comes near side, caught by O.J. Howard, the tight end. They will get a first down on the play. And Mrs. Jamerson Love again. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's zone. They, they're they're going to play zone. And when Jeff Collins, their defensive coordinator, as you see only a three-man rush here, he's going to play eight-man back. When he was asked, how are you going to stop Amari Cooper? He said, we're going to do what we do. And what he meant by is, we play zone. I mean, it, it could be Randy Moss and Amari Cooper out there. He's still going to play zone. That's all he's got. Well, they did not obviously get the first down. And Adam Griffith, who has struggled after hitting the first seven of the season, this one from 36 yards out, perfect. <laughs> Doesn't have a lot of hops. He had to be helped well, up. Now, three points around here is big. You heard the crowd. They know. NFL on CBS tomorrow. A single header four games early. Lead game is Denver at the Rams. And then later, Oakland at San Diego. That's the NFL today. Tomorrow it all begins with JB and the quartet. The NFL Today presented by Southwest Airlines. 5 nothing here, 2.06 to go. Well, Ali asked Nick Saban about the possible hangover effect after a tough game at LSU. Well, I think what he had going for him this week was the number one team in the country coming into play here. And the fact that there's only five teams in the country that still control their own destiny and don't care how often that committee meets. Alabama and Mississippi State can get there if they never meet again. The winner of this game controls their own destiny. Adam Griffith will kick off after the 36-yard field goal. And the 
top-ranked, undefeated Mississippi State Bulldogs find themselves down by five. Robert Johnson, number 12, didn't get much out of that return. Dylan Lee made certain of that. Bulldogs against top 10 teams. They trailed by a total of 249. Actually, today they've uh, been trending now five minutes and 51 seconds. There's Dan Mullen, sixth year, 42 years old. First down, 10. Three to the right. Eddie Jackson backing off. So is Geno Smith. Brandon Holloway is the running back, number 10. He gets popped behind the line. You know, we talked about Vern and how Mississippi State would look to their coordinator and their head coach, the same guy, Dan Mullen, calling the plays. He's told them all week, we're going to be wide open. There's nothing to fear. Now he has to be that way. Hasn't started out great. He can't flinch now. Here's Prescott out in the right. Good block on the edge. Yeah, open field Even tackling. better tackle by Landon yes. Collins. Wow. He's this amazing football player. I, you know, he's not the best safety I've ever seen at covering, you know, in the zone defenses, but he is an eighth man in the box secondary and a heat-seeking missile coming up to make open field tackles. Look at that. Third down. Eight. Empty backfield. Blitz coming. Back Prescott. Shot. Johnson, no good. Fourth down. Eddie Jackson in the vicinity. Well, that's how Alabama plays. They've always played that way. You know if you do it well, there's back shoulder throws available, and Dak Prescott throws a lot of them. But the timing better be perfect because Eddie Johnson and Cyrus J Jackson, excuse me, and Cyrus Jones are going to play the same technique all game. Eddie Jackson, you just got to look at number four, Chris Jones. Uh-oh, shaked it. That's going to be around the 40-yard line. Wow. Devin Bell. Uh, I, I thought it was going to be, I, I thought it was even farther than that. They got a good spot. And so did the Alabama bench. 24-yard <laughs> punt. There's no doubt as much as Mississippi State came into this game, that angle is a funny angle. I thought that was about the look at Nick Saban saying, come on, move up over here. <laughs> he was waving that official up the whole way. Well, not much has gone well for the Bulldogs from Starkville. Zucker with the Heisman Watch, presented by Nissan. JT Barrett breaking Braxton Miller's Ohio State records today at Minnesota with 189 rushing yards, 86 right here, and now a record 38 total touchdowns on the season in the Buckeyes' win on the road. Jameis Winston leads the Knolls on the road against the hot Miami team tonight, and Tad Gurley is back between the hedges against Auburn. Now back to Tuscaloosa. And back in Tuscaloosa, it's 5-0. A 24-yard punt has given Alabama terrific field position. 5-zip safety when Josh Robinson was tackled in the end zone. A 36-yard field goal. And Blake Sims, 6 of 7. Derrick Henry is the running back. He gets it, goes right, cuts back, and finds a few. Preston Smith, number 91, made the tackle. Gary was talking about the size of these guys up front. He's a pretty good example. They are. And, you know, right now, the Mississippi State offense is struggling. There's no doubt about that. So, as we talked about, that senior leadership at defense has to keep them in the game because Alabama could take the top off of this thing. You know, they're averaging 300 yards, giving up passing yards a game. And one big play could change that scoreboard. Sims looking deep, goes right down the middle, double coverage intended for 
are Darius Stewart. Matt Wells did a great job of coverage. He's one of those guys, again, that is a hybrid. He's a linebacker and a safety at the same time, and one of the fastest men on the football field for Mississippi State. A real important player for Mississippi State. And a very significant play for Mississippi State. Yeah, second time Darius Stewart's in the game, and they went deep to him both times. We've reached the end of one. Got a baseball score going, 5 nothing. We'll return to Tuscaloosa after this message. And a word from your local station. to Tuscaloosa as we look forward to quarter number two. Bert Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Ali LaForce with you at Bryant Denny. And it's been all Alabama so far. Five nothing they lead. And they've got a third down and eight in Mississippi State territory. DeAndrew White leads the three out to the left side. And Blake Sims will Get the snap back from center, Ryan Kelly. Sims with a lot of time, it's tipped and incomplete. Well, 24 yards of total offense for Mississippi State. You're right, they've got to count on this defensive. And they did. It was a huge stop for yeah. that defense right there. I think it was McKinney that knocked that pass right down. The two-thirds of the time, this Mississippi State defense stops the team on third down. They're veterans, but you know, Alabama loves it. They're running the football. They almost ran the ball for 50 yards in the first quarter. I think they love the way the game starts so far because they're used to these big games. Let's be honest, they played in a ton of them. Here is the snap back. And the punt, they will let it bounce. It bounce. Ooh, yeah. Nice play, though. Yep. You know, it, it, it's one of those plays you have to kind of risk and make a play, and he did, and it saved him nine yards. When you start on your own goal line, last time, remember, it cost him. Fred Ross makes a nice play there for Mississippi State. Remember last time they were on the goal line, he gave up two points. Yes. And now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Well, it's Danielson. part design. Yeah, before you start any project, you got to have a good call. And one of the things that you do is you play your defense. And when Kirby Smart dials up the right play, you have a good chance of getting points. And then you make open field tackles. We knew that was going to be a big part of the game. Handoff goes to Jamion Lewis. And he doesn't get anything. Nick Perry is there. Second down 10. Punt, safety, and a punt. 24 yards of total offense. He's got him right down the middle. Prescott. Oh, got nice it. Play. And he was knocked down. Cyrus Jones defending, but Deronia Wilson, number one. It's the play-action pass right here that is featured. It's the old Tebow play-action pass by himself. Watch Jamie and Lewis go right down the middle, wide open, but a nice play one-on-one -on -one by the big guy down the sideline. Josh Robinson on the field, gets the handoff and struggles for a few. That by far the biggest play offensively for Mississippi State. It was a game of 29. And one of the things that Mississippi State was upset, well, not upset, but when they looked back to a year ago, mm -hmm. Dan Mullen said, you know what? We just got to make some plays. When the ball's there 50-50, we have to come up with a few, just like Wilson did the play, previous play. Second down. Here's the reverse. Jamian Jamie, Jamie Lewis, I beg your pardon. Been injured all year. I almost believe since Mississippi State got to number one, as Jamie and Lewis goes in motion, Dan Mullen said, I don't care. We can win these games without Jamie. I want Jamie healthy for Alabama. And he's got him. He's in the slot right near the first and ten marker that you see. 
Deronya Wilson, Mr. Basketball in Alabama in high school. Outside to the left. First down 10. Play action. Prescott. Deep right side. Dropped. May have been tipped. Robert Johnson, the intended receiver. And Eddie Jackson was defending. You can see how much Mississippi State loves to attack the bump and run with the back shoulder throws. They're going to throw another one this time. If it would have been another foot to the right, it would have been complete. But you know what? Alabama says, I don't want to hear about it. If, 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 if you make the throw, you got it. You ain't going to do it all day. Second and ten. Quarterback draw. Boy, he is stiffened. Jonathan Allen, number 93, made the tackle. Take on the block. Allen, who had so many tackles in that, in that game, excuse me, only played 22 plays in that game last week. Did Jonathan Allen. This is more his type of game, the spread. Only got in 22 snaps a week ago. He is not at all sore. He's ready to play. Third down, nine. Trailing by five. Three to the right, two to the left. Here's Prescott. A lot of time this time. Intercepted. Picked off by Nick Perry. There's only three teams in the SEC that had less interceptions than Alabama going into this football game. Here he is, okay? They had six on the year. But this time, Dak Prescott threw into coverage, and Nick Perry breaks on the ball. It was a poor throw. It was a late throw. And again, if you don't throw the ball at a high level against Alabama, they eat you up. Inferior quarterbacks don't have a chance against Alabama. First interception of the season for number 27. And that leads to a little celebration. A moment ago, this was the scene on the Alabama bench. Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator, still coaching. That's Trey DePriest, who is listening avidly right now. They've had a pretty good first quarter of play, and here's Dak Prescott. Only two interceptions in the first five games, six in the last five, including today. But a couple good plays. Maybe just a little bit of positive for Mississippi State. A couple first downs, one catch. Again, it's going to be up to this defense for Mississippi State. They cannot give up the big play. Yeldon. They think they can stop the run by their front four. They believe they can stop it. They believe they're stout enough up front. No matter who's in there up front, it's in the secondary they're worried about giving up the big play. Just to give you an example for Mississippi State this year, UAB only competed 16 of 34 passes against Mississippi State for 435 yards. That's the type of disaster that they can't have happen. They need to get it. Okay, you complete a pass, but complete it for a first down, not a touchdown. We enjoyed dinner last night. Were you studying? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Bogart, the tight end. <laughs> I told you I don't have a life. This is kind of fun for me. <laughs> They're pretty good at it. Good protection up front. Goes through one tackle. Will Redman, who I think is an emerging star for Mississippi State number two. But again, third and medium. Third down, three. Sims rolling out. Oh, boy, the receiver slipped, DeAndrew White. And so it'll be fourth down. You know who studies more than me, Vern? Beniquez Brown, number 42, the linebacker. Watch him call the play. He's a film rat. Watch this. Watch him signaling. He knew it was coming. Look at him beat him to the play. He knew it was going to be that play before the ball was snapped. Yeah, they call him the brains of the defense, Beniquez Brown. And that will bring on J.K. Scott, the freshman putter. And Fred Ross is doing the return job today. He's up uh, between 25 and 30. 
return is on all the way. This is a good one. Fair catch. Called and taken by Fred Ross inside the 20. Well, every punt that's caught and not fumbled for Mississippi State is a big play. They've had some problems catching punts. 5-0. 10.43 to go. Second half. It's been Alabama's defense, which has shined the brightest so far. Nothing Alabama on this beautiful mid-November afternoon, and it's time to welcome the duck to our telecast, the AFLAC trivia question of the week. Which was the last SEC West team to win at LSU and at Alabama in the same season? The last one. Mississippi State won at LSU, and they're trying to win. And despite all of their problems in this game, they're still only down by five. That's true. I, I think both teams right now feel like, hey, we're doing it the way we want to do it. Alabama loves their defense so far. Robinson goes right, <laughs> but not very far. That was a decent run. Trey DePriest, number 33, <laughs> led the defensive effort. And Trey DePriest is a much more important football player in this game than last week. He's the quarterback of the defense. He has to find the formations and call it out. Remember earlier, he wasn't available for West Virginia, and Alabama struggled. He's the quarterback of that defense. Second down, six. Prescott has to throw it at the feet of Deronia Wilson. Pressure came on the corner blitz from Eddie Jackson. And he might have tipped it. 36. Prescott, modest numbers. He's 4 of 11 for 41 yards. And an interception. Toss. Lewis. Nick Perry, who has that interception, has this defensive tackle. Fourth down. Just can't do your rules any better than Alabama did right here. Nick Perry just, he's showing a two-deep safety, but then he becomes the pitch position player. He starts out going to the middle of the field. He understands his assignment as the pitch man as option football, and he does it exactly the way the defense was designed. Something Nick Saban talks about. If you know what you're doing, we have a chance to stop these guys. Well, Devin Bell shanked his last punt, 24 yards, so a change has been made. This is Logan Cook, and he kicks it, gets a pretty decent hop out of it. And it's down at the 39-yard line. One more look at Nick Perry. Yeah, he not only did he do his assignment, he also physically performed his assignment. Tom Palms in the student section being waved rhythmically. 5-0 Alabama with the lead. Let's take a look at the top 10 college football playoff. Mississippi State currently number one. Oregon open tonight for the state big game at Miami. TCU still trailing. That's at halftime. Baylor is open. Ohio State won today. Auburn plays tonight at Georgia and Ole Miss is open. I'm just thinking Alabama's played here as the number one team so many, many, many times. But Mississippi State, only the third team to come in as number one into Bryant-Denny Stadium. Third ever. Down the middle she goes. Justin Fowler. Well, are they going to go deep to Cooper? Are they going to go deep to O.J. Howard? No, they're going to go deep to the fullback off of play action. They've been running the ball between the tackles, isolation, and this time they go isolation deep and hurry up. How about Yelled that? Them, yes. <laughs> What's gotten into Nick Saban? <laughs> Lane Kiffin has yeah, gotten That's in. exactly right. It's a little different personality. Yeah, yeah. There's Lane Kiffin. First down, 10. First year as the offensive coordinator. Remember, the strength of Mississippi State is their red zone defense. 
flag on the field. Just thinking back to our conversation with Kiffin yesterday, and he was commenting about Nick Saban's attention to detail. Oh, yeah, every Number little 45 thing. 45 of the offense lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty remains first down. He said Saban has a diagram of every stadium in which they will play. And last Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, they had a staff meeting, put the diagram of Tiger Stadium up, and Nick said, if we go to overtime, here's where we want to go, away from the student section. And they went to overtime, it and worked. guess what? It worked. First down, 15. Story of the Mississippi State defense all year. Remember the Auburn game. 31 times into the red zone for Mississippi State. This is 32, only 13 scores all year. That's field goals and touchdowns. Inside play to Cooper. Uh, Mississippi State relies on this defense and the Verizon Red Zone stat, uh, stats. They are number one in FBS schools, yielding 31% touchdowns. Twice as good as the average. Yes. That's been the key to their season basically is defending the red zone. Is Alabama good enough to score? Second and seven. Sims fires it down to Yeldon. Out of the backfield, he was about the third option. And, and that's exactly right. Two parts here. The Alabama offensive line, remember, this is a great sacking unit. 32 sacks on the year for this Mississippi State team. Look at that pass protection and allows Blake Sims to go, I agree with you, his third guy and drop it off for very close to a first down. Now they will bring the uh, chain across from the far side of the field. And we will have a measurement. Jeff Collins, a defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, is counting on his front four to put pressure on the quarterback. Not a yard that time. They didn't even produce a yard of pass rush. First and goal. Well, they started it off with a penalty five yards back through a slant pass. And then Yeldon tiptoes forward for the first down after the catch. Yeldon stays on the field. The ball is at four. Very interesting here for Alabama. What do they think about their offensive line matchup against the strength of Mississippi State? They go spread, but how will they attack? The Andrew White near side, Amari Cooper in the slot. Jay Hughes is uh, matched up against Cooper. There's a touchdown. It's the same play we saw when we were here last time, only about 25 yards out further. He knew he had the slot one-on-one. -on -one. That's a really tough coverage assignment for Jay Hughes. And when you throw it that accurately, you know, you got to give something if you're a defense, and Alabama made him pay. What a nice drive. What a great finish. Blake Sims on fire in this football game. He's at home. Yes, yeah, 11 for 15, and that pass, I'll tell you, that pass for the first down to Yeldon showed me a lot. Well, take us through it. Well, again, the first part of it was he had time, okay? Starts out with the play-action pass to set up the field and get into the red zone. Then after the penalty, he drops back. Yeldon runs the play. And then finally, the touchdown pass to Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper now. Five catches, a touchdown. Zucker in New York. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Spencer, Brian, and I will get you caught up on all of today's action, including a battle of running games between Nebraska and Wisconsin. Corey Clement moments ago getting the Badgers within one. Need the extra point for the tie. Winner takes control of the Big Ten West.
7.45 to go first half here. Cooper just caught the touchdown pass from four yards out. And another fine drive executed by Blake Sims. 12-0. Largest deficit this season. Recall that they defeated three top ten teams in three weeks and became the fastest to ever rise from unranked to number one in the country. They've been number one for the last five weeks, but they need to get something going. And that is not the way to start. Dylan Lee was first. Henry was down there. I tell you, it's been a little bit of everything so far for Mississippi State. They started out a little tight. Their quarterback's been a little bit tight. Their Josh Robinson, remember we talked about the two guys that had to come through. Yep. Robinson and Dak Prescott. Uh, early in the game, Robinson runs the wrong type of a play and gets a safety. If you look at it right now, huge drive for Mississippi State. You know, 12 nothing, still a game. I don't think they can do what Auburn did here. Remember that, 24 nothing, sure and then 24-7 at the end of the half? Inside, did he grab it? Yes, he did. Darunya Wilson. Look at that coverage. Number again. one, yeah. Look at that coverage. Cyrus I mean, Jones. You know, when you look at it, you mentioned that these two teams are only, what, would you say, 85 miles apart? Yep. As you watch Jones against Wilson. The other distance is, you know, that Alabama only has two players that aren't four stars at least significantly playing for them. Mississippi State only has two four star players. Prescott, nothing. Trey DePriest was first. Jaron Reed was second. Prescott, nothing. When you're in the spread, you have to run your quarterback. Remember we talked about that Alabama held, held Cam Newton to just 39 yards rushing. Cam beat him in 2010 by throwing the ball. Here's Prescott running for the seventh time, and again, not much. Dalvin Tomlinson, number 54. Prescott has now run seven times for 20 yards. Interesting call by Dan Mullen on that one, too. Flag here. Nick Perry got a personal foul called against him, I believe. I think it's going to be marched off against Mississippi State. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Number 66 of the offense. At the distance to the goal, that is number 66, first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. One of those seniors up front, Ben Beckwith, shoves Nick Perry at the end of the play. Perry knocks him down. Okay, now watch him get up. And a bit of a soccer dive, but hit him right in the yeah, face. Yeah. But it's always the second guy, isn't it? Of course. But that could have taken place in Brazil. <laughs> well, down. it happened in Tuscaloosa. And I'm telling you, with this field position, it could get ugly real fast here. Devin Bell is back to punt from the end zone. Christian Jones, this one takes a bit of a Mississippi State hop, but excellent field position. Tuesday night at 10 Eastern, it's a sports conversation unlike any other. As elite women in sports provide another voice for all of the trending topics. Don't miss, we need to talk. Tuesday nights at 10 Eastern, only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Our own Allie DeForce will be back in the studio, and you guessed it. On I did. It was, I mean, it was like uh, Dara Torres and Tracy Wilson, our, our former silent. It was like facing Perry Mason. I mean, <laughs> it, it's your turn next, but I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> not a nice place. There's just, they know sports. I was nervous. Perry Mason or Judge Judy? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. way. laughs> I'm just thinking about the, the folks who don't know our point of reference. Deep for Cooper. Leaping, catching at the one. They're still tussling over the ball. 
That's Justin Cox, number nine, and Amari Cooper. So you got a couple of nines, but he was ruled a catch at the one, almost the one foot line. It is Alabama first and goal. We talked about five star players and just making plays. This is the end of the play, and Cooper goes up and gets it. Mississippi State was not fooled. Kendrick Market, number 26, the safety. Watch this. It's going to be set up and into the middle, but he was ready for it. Alabama tried to hustle to the line. Let's see if they're going to review this. This watch in the secondary. Mississippi State backs up. You can't back up any more than that. It's just number nine is better than your guy. And Market could not come up with the play. In position, but not as good. First down. Ruled a catch. And it's first and goal. Derrick Henry. There's Sims. Fowler is tight to the right side. Derrick Henry is the running back. He gets the handoff and he gets a fumble. Well, I'll tell you, on that play, Cooper thought he scored. Cooper runs to the bench thinking it's a touchdown on the play. Mississippi State has the ball. Yes. Kendrick Market came out with it, number 26. Alabama thought they had scored. From behind, Matt Wells, I think, came from, oh, I, I think he was across the line. I think he fell forward and then the ball came out. This is going to get reviewed, and I think it's going to be called a touchdown. Wells grabs it, but I think Henry gets across before the ball comes out. Ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by Mississippi State. The previous play is under further review. Well, it's in the hands or the mind or the eyes of Doyle Jackson now. He is our replay official. And Matt Wells comes from behind and catches the play. Right there, but he falls forward. Now, does he cross? He still got the ball right there, and then it comes out. Now, is there enough to overturn it? Beniquas Brown ripped it out. Remember, on the field, it's called a fumble. A fumble. Yes. Saw a 13-minute press conference. <laughs> about an overturned call. I don't see the football there on that one. I did not see the football. That's the closest one. We probably need to see that one a few more times. Here's the reverse angle. Watch number 42, Beniquas Brown. There's the contact. Well, here the the important fact has to be the call was fumble. Well, it, as I was watching the replay, I was trying to say that Bob Davey was very upset with a play call on fourth down that said there's nothing in the replay. You can't assume. You have to be a hundred percent sure to overturn a play. Jeez, I think he's in. I, I, I got to say, before the ball comes out, if I was doing it, I would call it a touchdown. I would. He still has the ball, right? Yep, yep, yep. And there, then, and okay. And, and then right at the end, it pops out. I tell you, Amari Cooper was funny. He ran to the bench. He was single touchdown. This baby's over. Doyle Jackson again is the replay official. Here's Matt Moore. Review, the ruling on the field, touchdown. I have to say, I think it's the right call. I, I thought he broke the plane. He doesn't have to get to the ground. He needs to just break the plane.
So the call overruled. Can you, can you say exhale <laughs> for Henry right there? Oh, yeah. Adam Griffin, extra point, up and good. Another look. Amari Cooper on first down makes the big catch. And then on first down again from behind Beniquas Brown, number 42 is the guy who actually ripped it out at the end. Matt Wells got the first hand on it, but not in time. Now, a deep hole for Mississippi State, 19-7. Well, the dancing began, and there's Lane Kiffin going over and saying, get back. I mean, they were enjoying the moment. So were they. So was he. 19 zip. You know, like life is like football. Can't avoid the bully. If you don't punch the bully in the nose, he's going to get you. There's no way around this. Mississippi State, if they want to be the champion, has to go through Alabama. It's been that ever since I can't wait, ever since I came in this league. Here's the kickoff deep, and a knee will be taken by Brandon Holloway. Thursday Night Football now lives on the NFL Network. Jamal Charles has the Red Hot Chiefs on a roll as they face rookie Derek Carr and the Raiders. Thursday Night Football, Thursday at 8 Eastern, live on NFL Network. Mark Starr, former Alabama quarterback, led the Packers to two wins, Super Bowl I and two. Want to wish Bart the best. At home in Birmingham, he and his wife, Terry, been uh, fighting some health issues. He's one of the nicest men I've ever met. Competed against him when he was a head coach of the Green Bay Packers. Mm. First down 10, Prescott. Look at the bunch formation at the top. Nobody open. Dalvin Tomlinson gets the sack. Remember that bunch formation that Alabama struggled with earlier against Ole Miss? Uh, I think they got it worked out. Nobody to throw to, and Zach goes down. And Delvin Tomlinson, another one of those guys that did not play a lot of plays against LSU, is being used in this football game. A lot of depth on this Alabama football team. Second and 14. Prescott hit as he lets it go, but he catches Malcolm Johnson with a long completion. Well, Malcolm Johnson was the leading receiver a year ago against Alabama. He had six completions, and those are the type of plays. It's that play-action pop pass that is so important. You have to be able to run the ball just to have that play in your arsenal. 28-yard gain, and a first and 10 with four and a half to go before halftime. Lewis, nope, Prescott keeps it after faking to Lewis. And Eddie Jackson, boy, they are keyed in on Prescott. As you would expect, uh, they would be. It's another one of those secondary guys. We talked about it in the open. This time it's a corner blitz. Again, hand that to your coaching staff. Kirby Smart gets his eighth guy in the box, or seventh if you want to do it because of the spread. He gets the extra man in the box by blitzing a different guy each time. Josh Robinson slips one tackle. And then... Uh, manages to lean forward for another three yards. Vern, just think about this, though. I mean, again, the running game. The last three years, Mississippi State's long rush has been 15 yards, and that was by Josh Robinson as a freshman two years ago here. They cannot bust loose on a running play. Third down three. They're one of six on conversions. It will be Prescott, not and he will not 
get there. Big decision for Dan Mullen now. His defense needs rest. His offense needs something. He knows if he gives the ball back to Alabama right here, they're going to probably go deep on him again. The last two times on first down, remember Fowler up the middle and then Cooper up the middle on a pass. Will he go for it? Apparently so. Now, Alabama for the year has given up only one of ten fourth down attempts. One of ten. Fourth and three here with Mississippi State trailing by 19. It's hard to run the quarterback here. They've had no success running the quarterback. Play clock at one. Had to time take out. a timeout. You know, usually you say, oh, let's just dial our quarterback here. <laughs> no success. Fourth and three when we come back. Back for a full house at Bryant Denny. Coming up, the Geico Halftime Report. We'll go to Adam and the guys in our New York studio. Get you caught up in this late-season college football Saturday afternoon. I'm telling you, I would punt it. Mississippi State has three timeouts. Punt Alabama back down there and take your chance. Or they have two timeouts. Take your chance. They get the ball to start the second half. They don't get it here. Alabama's going to turn this field upside down again. Prescott will go to the right side, dives forward, he got it. Flag. It's going to be face mask. Face mask, at the end. indeed. Justin Sr., number 58, the right tackle, leading the way. And a great block out there on Xavier Personal Dixon foul. to get out Please there. Man. And De Trey DePriest <laughs> knew how big of a Automatic play it was. Down. Reaches out, and Dan Mullen, we talked about it, he's more aggressive than I would have been. Mm. And it's hopefully it'll pay off for him because he knows. He gets the ball to start the second half. He could pull that Auburn double. Remember Auburn behind 24-0. They scored late, and they scored on the first drive of the second half. That's what he's looking for. First down, 10, Bulldogs. Prescott comes near side. Gawanya Wilson down to the 16-yard line. Cyrus Jones defending number five. Well-placed ball, catch, and then he's a handful. Give all credit to Dan Mullen. If yep. it wouldn't have worked, he would have been criticized. Now it'll be me. <laughs> <laughs> I can take it. <laughs> Anonymously, no doubt. <laughs> Second and one. Prescott, right side. Caught. Look at that defensive play. Fred Ross. How about that? Nick Perry, who's been active. It'll be third down. Joe Morrow is out on the field. Number 16. Wilson, Morrow, and Ross near side. Ashton Shumpert is the second running back along with Robinson. Prescott, first down at the 13-yard line, perhaps the 12. Landon Collins with the tackle. Well, how important is this to this Mississippi State football team? Their defense hung for a while, but then the passing game finally put some points on the board. Now he gets to rest them and perhaps put points on the board for Mississippi State. Huge part of the football game. Brandon Ivory, number 99 on the field at the nose. Prescott inside. Wilson, first and goal. Deronio Wilson, number one. When you talk to Alabama, they said Deronio Wilson will be a factor because of his size. Perfectly thrown football. First down goal. Down low, Josh Robinson. But he couldn't get low enough. No, he couldn't. That time Malone and Dylan Day and Beckwith got knocked back. The line of scrimmage was owned by that front of Alabama. Oh, 
Offside. Defense number five. Mm. After this is the goal, remains first down. And that means in his bump and run position to the outside, he will, I think he was out there. Yeah. Was he on the edge of it? He lined up in that neutral zone. And so a do-over for Mississippi State. Robinson, five carries, ten yards. Oh, oh they moved. Yes, they did. Left side. Boy, yep. that's just a brutal penalty right there. Yeah, it was Malone, number 70. Justin Malone, left guard, who moved. Ball start. Number 70, the offense. The five-yard penalty to remain first down by rule with the clock running under a minute. A 10-second runoff Move. is possible. Brutal. Mississippi State is taking a timeout to avoid the 10-second runoff. Good use. Timeout, Mississippi State. That is their second timeout of the half. Hmm. Well, critical, to say the least. I'm the master of the obvious. <laughs> taken by Mississippi State to save the 10 second runoff. First and goal and we welcome back the Duck. Aflac could be a question the answer. The last SEC West team to win at LSU and Alabama it was Mississippi State 1957. First down goal Gary. Yeah I, I find that what you want to use a strategy here for Mississippi State is always keep Alabama guessing whether you're going to run or pass. I think I would throw on first down and keep it available. They are going to throw on yes, first down. Yes, they are. Deep in the end zone. And he had a wide open Malcolm Johnson and Prescott overthrew it. Yeah, and not he didn't throw it well at all. But see, what Dan was thinking is by doing the play action here, now I can still run or pass on second down. If he would ran on first down, then he'd have to use his timeout if he doesn't make it, and then he's forced to pass the rest of the way. Here he still can present the run-pass option to Alabama. Looks like blown coverage by Alabama on that play. Second down and goal. 12th play of the drive. Into the corner, battle for it. Cyrus Jones defending Deronia Wilson, third down. See, now watch this one. He'll run the ball so that on fourth down he can do what he wants. Okay, because if he runs it and doesn't make it, he uses his last time out and then decide what to do. So this will be a run. Think it'll be Prescott or Robinson? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All I'm here for is to set you up. Third and goal. Under center. Nope. Josh Robinson alongside Dak Prescott. It'll be Robinson. He throws it at the last minute, incomplete. You know what that was going to be? That was going to be a jump pass. It just didn't get timed out well. Dan Mullen dialed the play he called against Oklahoma and Tip Tebow the jump pass to the slot that time. It just didn't happen. It took too long. He wasn't there. Dax ready to jump, but good coverage. And so Sobies comes on to get something out of this long drive. He's six of seven field goals for the year. This is only from 23 out. And Mississippi State does get on the board. What a stand by Alabama. I think the key play had to be the penalty. The illegal motion on the first down play, that changed the whole dynamic. Team three here at Brian Denny in downtown Tuscaloosa on the campus of the University of Alabama. Go back through the seat. Well, this was the first down play. You don't get a lot of opportunities against Alabama, but here was the one that Dak Prescott had a chance to put the touchdown on and threw it very poorly. Had him, overthrew him, 
and was seven yards out of bounds. And it all goes back. Remember, first and goal, a flinch by Justin Malone. But it, at the end, it was Cyrus Jones, number five, that stayed in his coverage and made the play again. He is having a great season. Former wide receiver, here's the squib kick taken by O.J. Howard. And that's it. I mean, Dan Mullen did a great job. He kept Alabama guessing, but Alabama performed. Prescott, 9 of 19, throwing the ball. 12 runs for 24 yards. Robinson, four carries for only 10 yards. Let's go down to Allie, who is with Dan Mullen. Coach, your team seemed out of its comfort zone out there. Do you feel like they're playing tight? How do you get them back to playing Mississippi State ball? No, I thought, I thought we did some good things. I mean, early on, we had just a terrible run to create a safety to give them some momentum right off the bat. Uh, but overall, I think our guys are we got to start winning field position battle. I think, you know, that the field position has been the name of the game. They're starting in midfield, and we've been starting back to the wall every single drive. In the red zone on that last drive, why did you decide not to run it? Well, we, ha we had a great pass there at the end. They tackled our receiver, I guess, but uh, they said they just got tangled up, I guess. But, uh, um, you know, for us right there, we had some chances. The clock running down. You got to manage the clock with the timeouts in that situation to make sure we give ourselves the most opportunities. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Yeah, I think it was the jump pass, and he didn't get the call. He thought he had him, but it was definitely going to be the jump pass to finish off the half. He did coach Tim Tebow, after all. <laughs> That's the end of the first half. The score is 19 to 3. Now let's go to Adam Zucker in our New York studio. All right, thanks, Vern. Coming up here on the Geico Halftime Report, Spencer, Brian, and I will tell you why TCU might be making a surprising exit from the playoff top four after this word from your local station. Halftime in Tuscaloosa, 19-3. Alabama leads Mississippi State. Thursday on CBS, can Sherlock Holmes outsmart a computer? Don't miss a new elementary this Thursday at 10, 9 Central, only CBS. Many great traditions abound on game day throughout the league, and each week we'll give you a taste of tradition presented by Sonic. For more, here's Allie. For 102 years here at Alabama, the Million Dollar Band has been a part of the game day pomp and pageantry. This season, the band added a new twist to their pregame ritual. About one hour before kickoff, approximately 50 band members march away from the 400-member strong elephant stomp to perform at the President's Mansion in front of guests and dignitaries. Vern, I've heard of bands playing at tailgate parties, but this brings it to a whole new level. Boy, does it, does it ever, Allie. And they have made that walk from the president's mansion inside Bryant-Denny, and they will perform. It's 19 to 3, Alabama. Come on. Coming up, 19 to 3, Alabama has the lead. Now let's go inside the headset powered by AT&T, official sponsor of the SEC. Here's Allie with Nick Saban. Coach, your defense has forced Mississippi State entirely out of its element. How has it been able to do so? Well, we've done a good job of stopping the run, but they put a pretty good drive together there, you know, at the end of the first half. So it's going to be important for us to, you know, get things going here in the second half. They got the ball first. You know, this is a good team. They are where they are because of who they are and what they can do. So it's important for us to go out here and reset the tempo in the second half. There is no score in the game. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Mississippi State will get the ball to open the third quarter. Alabama won the toss and received to open the game. Well, Nick Saban said, nice drive at the end. They didn't finish it the way they hoped. That's right. And they got the stop there. Uh, 
A self-inflicted play by Mississippi State that they could not recover from. Adam Griffith will kick off. Possession game. It's not a right. blowout here, right. okay? Dak Prescott has to settle down a little bit. He's missed open players. I mean, you know, they got to be number one by him having a Heisman type season. Right. He's not even having an average football game for Dak Prescott. You need to play at a very high level against a good defense, and this is one of the great defenses in college football. Here's Robinson. That's his fifth carry. Prescott struggled. Well, you know, it was started out with a simple screen pass. He threw it too hard. He misfired on a throw over the middle when he's tried to run the ball between the tackles. It hasn't been there. It's been stout. And then at the end, he missed an opportunity for a touchdown pass. Second down, seven. From the backside, watch out. Robinson makes the catch. He's got a... First down plus. Ashawn Robinson. That's a gain of 12. And a nice job by dropping that football off. And that time, Landon Collins did not make the one-on-one -on -one tackle. Remember those one-on-one -on -one tackles in the secondary? I thought it was the key to the football game. Robinson heads left and cuts up field. Gary, take us through the halftime trends. Well, let's start where you got to start. I mean, we knew, Dak knew, Dan Mullen knew, everybody that knows football knew he had to come through. Blake Sims having a better game. I mean, he really is. Amari Cooper had the touchdown and then the, the catch right down to the one and then field position. Vern, seven drives, five of them inside their own 20. Here's Dak Prescott. Nick Perry, Landon Collins. First down 10, moving well to open the third quarter. Deep in the double coverage. Well, it was double coverage because two Mississippi players were together. <laughs> They each were covered by one guy, so it produced double coverage. Watch the two Mississippi players go right down the field together, so two Alabama players follow them. <laughs> you were right, Fern, that double coverage, but each guy had one guy. That's a 30-yard gain at a first down 10. Prescott, left side, one-on-one -on -one coverage. And uh, Cyrus Jones very close to the Runya Wilson. Which Cyrus Jones goes, you know, is everybody, anybody ever going to forget that Mike Evans caught a couple passes against me? Because when they get inside the red zone, everybody tries to throw the fade on Cyrus Jones. Jones is going, come on, it was my first game. He was a pretty good player. <laughs> Second and 10. 19-3, Alabama. Robinson goes left, gets a block out on the edge, but Geno Smith fought off the block, number 24, and made the tackle. Nobody does it better than these Alabama defensive backs holding off the wide receiver and then playing the player. He's going to come into the picture right now. He holds off the block by Freddie Ross and then ends up stopping it, so it's third and medium. Three wide right. Prescott 
Goes into the corner for Jamie and Lewis. Yes. And again, Cyrus Jones is close. Xavier Dixon, number 47, saved the touchdown that time. Coming around the edge, he lines up late and then forces Dak Prescott to throw the ball early. He lines up late, boom, he gets a running back on him. That's a very touch, tough matchup, and Josh Robinson did not handle it very well. Evan Sobey asked for the field goal attempt, 32 yards. Dak Prescott is the holder. So three to begin the third for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Nick Saban, Dan Mullen, it's 19-6. Monday on CBS, tune in to see why critics are saying Scorpion has some real sting. Don't miss the new hit drama Scorpion Monday, 9, 8 Central, only CBS. Christian Jones deep to receive the kickoff. Landon Collins is back there with him on the right side. And Logan Cook will kick off for Mississippi State. moves well remember a week ago we talked about how the troubles for Blake Sims throwing the ball down the field well in this game on first down Lane Kiffin has given Blake two play action passes and he's hit both of them very big plays both set up touchdowns in this game and you look at the pass chart remember a week ago not one completion till the last ice pass chart 12 of 16 so far in the ball game deep down the middle oh it's dropped by oj howard well, O.J. Howard made some big plays on the last drive against LSU to get out of bounds and catch the ball. But again, a perfectly delivered football. And Vern, you know, we talked about it in the open. You made a good, great point about it. The difference between Blake Sims at home, another perfect throw. Yes. Second down, 10. T.J. Yeldon. Fake the draw, Sims. Oh. oh, he avoids the tackle and then puts it on a rope. Uh, Cooper, yes or no? I think it's skipped. Yep. You know, uh, Mississippi State leads this conference with 32 sacks. This would have been 33 with almost anyone else. Great escape on the play, ball on the run, and hits the ground. Just the nose of the ball. Gets on the ground. A little bit of help. That's all you need. It'll be called incomplete. And so third down 10, Alabama. Only one of six third down conversions in the ball game. Sims near side. That was wobbled, but he got it complete. From Darius Stewart, number 13. It's going to be short of a first down. Yep. That's the third ball thrown to Darius Stewart. We talked to Blake Sims about him yesterday. We were warned that we would see a little bit more playing time. He's an elite athlete, 40-inch vertical jump. They talked to their wow about how he did in practice. But so far in the game, nothing big. J.K. Scott on to punt. Fred Ross is the deep man. Snapper is Cole Mazza, M-A-Z-Z-A. The up back, Jalston Fowler. And here's Scott. 
big one. Down inside oh, the five. Six there is a flag on the field. 55 yard punt if it stands. Must be against the number 30 Duvall, huh? <laughs> right at the end of the play, was it? After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 30 of the kicking team, 15 yard penalty. That is number 30's first unsportsmanlike conduct. And it was way behind the play. Mm. It was not necessary, and it takes a field position at the five or the six. It turns it out to the 21. Now, that's not great field position, but five, six, very different field position, as Dan told Allie, a big part of the football game. And you know you're going to hear from the coach when you do one like that. That's not mild-mannered Nick Saban, is it? it's not. SEC on CBS is sponsored by Wheels Up. John Hancock. Autotrader.com. And by Chick-fil-A. Top-ranked Mississippi State undefeated this year. And toward the end of last year, their last loss. 13 games ago to Alabama in Starkville. And uh, let's go back and see if we can determine what Denzel DeVall was uh, found guilty of. Yeah, it happened right here. Just uh, continued to play a little too long. The officials would have let him get away with a little bit. But then the last one again, remember, we saw a second one earlier that got called. Now Alabama gets for one right at the end of the play. First down 10, Mississippi State. And remember, that would be, it's the equivalent of a 15-yard carry, basically, for Mississippi State. From the 5 out to the, or the 6 to the 21. Dylan Day is the center for the Bulldogs over the ball. Josh Robinson, very modest numbers so far today. Prescott will hold it, keep it. Couple of yards. Let's go back to the studio for this Ford update. Here's Adam. All right, Vern, number four TCU is down by 10, but they have scored 17 unanswered points at Kansas. This is Cameron Eccles Looper on a 69 yard punt return to give the Horn Frogs the lead. They are up 34 27, 12 minutes to go in the game. Back to you. All right, Adam, our score is 19 to 6. Bulldogs have scored right before the end of the half and on their opening possession both time field goals however dropped and the official he's claiming yeah. that the official the umpire got in well, his way you can't complain too much because you use them in your pass offense to help you pick all game the umpire got in the way of the throw and a pass deflection for the umpire now that's part of the game the umpire is trying to get out of the way and when you run those shallow crosses, it's part of the action. You have to deal with it. Third and nine. Prescott takes off. Now he heaves it, and it's dropped. Jamie and Lewis Man. had a first down. You know, I, I've, I've heard a lot of coaches say that in big games, I never worry about spectacular plays. I worry about the regular plays. If we just make the plays we're capable of doing, we'll be fine. Mississippi State has made a lot of unforced errors in this game. Very hard to beat an average opponent, let alone a good opponent, when you're making those type of errors. And after that drop, it's fourth and nine. Devin Bell is on to punt. Christian Jones they deep. Did not have a good punting or kicking game, do they? No. No. Boy, that was a, like a high school kick. 33 yards on the Devin Bell punt. Here's the drop, Jamie and Lewis. He had 64 catches last year. Nineteen six. Alabama now has the ball in good field position. And now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athletes, Ryan Kelly, outstanding young man who is the center 
of Alabama. Going after his master's, volunteered this semester at Rock Quarry Elementary School. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Alabama's General Scholarship Fund. Ryan Kelly grew up in a suburb of Cincinnati, big Notre Dame fan, as a young man. And then thought, eh, warmer in Tuscaloosa. And he wanted the challenge of playing at Alabama. That's right. He yeah. really did. He said, I wanted to take on that challenge. Well, first down, great field position. Lane Kiffin's tried three big ones. Will he try another one on first down? Cooper being pressed by Will Redmond. Bottom of the screen. Here's Sims. And out of the backfield. There he is again, our Darius Stewart. He's a true freshman. And they did tell us yesterday we're going to go. Well, he was all over practice. Andrew White, number two, it can't be 100%. Right. And, you know, they bring him out, string him out, get another one of those five-star players. And, uh, you know, there's there's D'Andrew the right there. He gave it a try. But, you know, it's tough to come back from him when you pull a muscle on Wednesday. Up the middle, Derek Henry. Ryan Brown. I thought that was going to gash there. Ryan Brown made a nice tackle for Mississippi State. You know, I, watching all year, I haven't seen Alabama run the ball between the tackles as much all year as they've tried to run the ball in this game against Mississippi State. Henry hit behind the line and dropped. Nikos Brown, yes. he's a good football player, boy. He just can feel the play as it goes. He's lined up right there. And watch him just anticipate and go. Take the gap. Knows exactly where the play is going to end up. He sometimes, as a linebacker, now obviously I've never played linebacker, but I've been told, and I've seen a bunch of good ones, that they can't even see the ball player. They just guess where he's going to be. They've just seen it so many times, and obviously he guessed right. They're now 6-6. Six, six. Again, this was against the zone. He had to wait for it to open up and just off the fingertip on number 42, Beniquez Brown. I mean, that's high level passing. I mean, this is for a guy, I mean, just think about a week ago, how he struggled and what a different quarterback he is at home. Pretty extraordinary. He's now 15 of 21 in this game. That's Stewart in motion. Get it to Henry, get behind the line, gets a couple. He's he's a Heisman player at home and a Heisman player on the <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot in that saying. If you really I, think about it. Oh, know. I know, I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> he's been played at Notre Dame once, I he's think. Been, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> to be very subtle, though. Joe's yeah, a good no, buddy. Joe's a good buddy. Well, we're good partners. I, I got it. I knew what you were. Uh oh. Sanders. Yeah, he got, yeah, he got there it. Go. Preston Smith. Preston Smith, the All American, the one guy that Lane Kiffin singled out to us that he said he could be a difference maker is number 91. He lined up at right defensive end, gets inside the. How about that? Cam. Robinson, a freshman going against an All-American, and he's holding his own, but that time Preston Smith got it. Well, early in the season for three weeks in succession. Could this be the screen that we've been waiting for? There's Looks one. like it. Yep. There's inside the 20. Adam Griffith will come on to try the field goal. Cooper Bateman is the holder. Fourth and ten. This from 37. Made one earlier, 36. Uh oh, missed it. Uh oh. That is way wide right. You know, Mississippi State staying in this football game. And if there is effect from the 
tough football game against LSU a week ago. Might it pop up in the fourth quarter if Alabama gets wore down because Mississippi State is still right in this thing. Adam Griffith has had a very inconsistent year. Dan Mullen liked that. Nineteen six nighttime in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Beautiful scene. Let's bring you up to date on the SEC East. Missouri, Georgia. Missouri has the lead right now, but they lost to Georgia. And Georgia playing Auburn tonight will welcome back Todd Gurley. Four game suspension for accepting more than three thousand dollars for autographed memorabilia. Gurley will play between the hedges tonight. And also remember uh, Missouri at a rebuilt Texas A&M, also a huge football game. Yes, it is. They control their own destiny. Here's Prescott. Not one. Tell you what, you know, Alabama, you, you, you never, they all, at the defensive line, they all look about the same in stature and size. They're 320 pounds. Look at them take on those blocks. I mean, you look at a big man like Jonathan Allen and Jaron Reed, number 90, who made 15 tackles last week. They just stuff the blocker and then throw him away and make the tackle. Prescott apparently lost his helmet, so he has to sit out of play. Yeah, there's the. Ooh. So Damian Williams is on the field. He's played in four games this year. And the sophomore quarterback is looking at second down and 10. He almost Robinson, it 100% outside. Run. I think Alabama played it as a 100% run, yep. too, and they were yep. right. DJ Petway made that stop. Take on the blockers, keep the safeties and linebackers free, and then clean up whatever's there. That's the job of those two defensive linemen inside. Set the edge by the two defensive ends, and then inside, those two guys inside have to take on a three-on-two, the defensive tackles. Well, you can see not much going on the ground for the two offensive stars. So they'll go to the air, and here's Robinson. Breaks a tackle, and he might yes. have enough for Se the first down. Second time he's dropped it off at the end of the play and got a positive play out of it. Remember last time he dodged a tackle by Landon Collins. This time, same type of play. Splits the defenders. Trey DePriest needed to make that tackle. That was the breakdown. The difference from it being a fourth down punt or a first down play. Trey DePriest didn't make the play. First down, 10. After 30. Play action again. He has to run. And he gets out across the 35. Ashawn Robinson. Now let's go back to New York once again. Adam Zucker. Vern, Wisconsin has scored 35 straight on Nebraska thanks to Melvin Gordon. He has a new single game record at Wisconsin. 369 rushing yards. Let's get it back to you. All right. It's second down and four here. Prescott got him. That could be offensive pass interference. Okay. That's what Saban is claiming. Wow. He, it, I was, I thought, very obvious and not seen. It was obviously a back shoulder throw the whole way. But did Wilson get away with a shove on this play? Oh, yeah, extended his arms. It's hard enough to play the back shoulder play anyway when you give the receiver the ability to do that it's impossible that's a gain of 14 and another first down Prescott inside to run you Wilson just a yard shy tackle made by Nick Perry 345 to go third quarter stay in the game stay in the game score a touchdown let the pressure shift to the home team in the fourth quarter that's always the formula Robert Johnson, the tight end, or wide receiver, is in tight this time. Here's Robinson searching, probing, nothing there, but he might 
Reggie Raglan, we have not called his name much in this game, but he made that tackle. Again, those defensive tackles, they stuff it inside, and then you allow the linebackers and safeties to clean it up. He did get the first down, 3.07 to go. 19-6. Reverse. No, they faked it. Prescott has it. Now Robinson has it. And he's inside the 15. Wide open and be careful. Mississippi State will go lightning fast here after a big play. 26-yard game. Great deceptive ball handling by Prescott. Chip away, chip away, chip away. But on first down of a drive, that's when both of these coordinators are dialing their big plays. Now they reverse it. This is Fred Ross. Nothing. De Dalvin Tomlinson. Well, you're right. The ball handling was excellent. He faked it to Josh Robinson, and then the receiver coming across, and then back to Josh Robinson. And then on the reverse, Dak Prescott got a block on it, but still, too much pursuit, too much assignment, quality assignment play by Alabama's defense on that reverse right there. Second down, 10. Into the end zone, intercepted by Cyrus Jones. being hard-headed they've been trying this for two games it's only worked once in two games and it was on a one-handed catch they're gonna go they think big guy against a small guy and number five is having an all-american year he pushes him out of bounds i don't know what dak was seeing on that one he isn't even in bounds turns around and makes an all-american play Lost opportunity for the Bulldogs. Lane Kiffin and Kirby Smart. First down, 10. Play action, Sims. Looks down, he's got double coverage. He shows short. And Cooper, our Darius Stewart, was down at the 35-yard line, but not open. Uh, Dak Prescott. What did you see or not see? Well, it's a high wire act all the time, but on that one, it looked very clearly that Cyrus Jones was in position. But again, remember all week, the coaching has probably been is our six foot five guy against their smallest quarterback, cornerback, excuse me, put it up there, let him make a play. Sure. Well, it didn't work. Second down and 10. Sims chased Matt Wells. Sims still up, heaves it. He saves about eight yards by yep. getting rid of that ball right at the end. All it has to do is cross the line of scrimmage when you're outside of the pocket. And it did. Blake Sims won this job. He waited patiently behind A.J. McCarron. I think you know that Jacob Coker transferred in from Florida State, widely assumed. He would be the starting quarterback, but Sims had a great scrimmage a week before the season opened and he has had the starting spot ever since third and ten cooper bottom of the screen sims is looking the other direction <clears throat> it'll be fourth down well, that was nice coverage by mississippi state that time pretty good protection at the offensive line throws the ball to the spot where only his guy can get it and stewart just couldn't make the play but a safe throw Mississippi State loaded the box and then failed on Sims trying to fool him. They did not. That was pretty good offense and pretty good defense. J.K. Scott on five punts, a 45.4 average. And Fred Ross is back. He is returning punts for the first time 
this year. Jamal Graham had done the job most of the year because of uh, Jamie and Lewis's injury. And Ross has been back all day. Now, hold on. What do we got? Part of the snap. Delay. Number 15 for the offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. That moves it back to the 15 yard line. This means he can punt it farther. I mean, that's, that's what I can, I'm just thinking the same well, thing. I mean, Mississippi State will likely, if they catch it, have their best field position by far in the football game. There he goes. That's a boomer. Ross at the 40. Ross at the 50. Ross at the other 40. Reggie Ragland made the tackle, but you hear some murmuring now. Oh, uh, sure. I mean, considering where Mississippi State has started this game on their first possession of the, each drive, think about it. They've, this is their 10th possession. Prior to this, their best field position was the 25-yard line on their own 25. They get the ball in plus territory. First time all game. 110 to go in the third, 19-6. Alabama leading the top-ranked Bulldogs of Mississippi State. It'll be Prescott. There's a Dak-like run. Eddie Jackson hauls him down from behind. Remember, coming into this game, Vern, Alabama has only allowed 19 rushing attempts of 10 yards or more. That's the third one in the game that Mississippi State has had, the second by Prescott. He's the key to the offense. When you run the spread, you have to run the quarterback. That was a 22-yard gain. Here's Robinson, the bowling ball. Hasn't kept it in the lane tonight. Twice this year, he's been just short of 200 yards. Had one of 197 at LSU. We saw him at Kentucky when Robinson rushed for 198, and as the clock was winding down, pleaded with his coach, <laughs> give me one more chance right, to go over 200. Right now, he's just pleading for a win. Yes. Doesn't care about yards at all. Here's Robinson going left, up the middle, 10. First and goal, Mississippi State. Another 10-yard run, and 10-yard runs down here in red zone territory are like 25-yard runs. How impressive was that? A great block by Ben Beck with number 66 that time. One of those seniors made the play for Mississippi State. First down goal from the four. That's the quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. It's a long walk, but you know what? They get away from the student section. Was that by design? Does he have a chart or anything like that, or did it just happen? I don't know what Dan Mullen, it could have happened. <laughs> it could have happened. <laughs> we'll return to Tuscaloosa <laughs> right after this word from your local station. Denny as we begin the fourth quarter Mississippi State dominated that third quarter they did get only three points out of it but now they trail by 13 but they have a first down goal and uh, the joint is jumping over in Mississippi State and remember we ended the half right here with three straight passes let's see if they do it differently now It'll be Prescott, nothing. Nick Perry was there. Deshaun Robinson. Boy, taken on, inside out. Nick Perry didn't even have time to make the tackle. Second down goal. He might have, but it was already made before he could get there. Three wides to the right. Josh Robinson comes up to make sure he hears 
the play. Now double checks with Prescott. Prescott got a man open. Touchdown. Fred Ross. Right, you can't design it any better than this. Dan Mullen knew exactly the coverage Alabama would be in. It was a combo coverage. He knew they were playing inside out on the slot receiver. So he fakes out, allows the two players to come in and forces the outside man. He thinks he's got him on the out. All three guys come inside. That's how you break down the combo coverage. You figure at least one of the three will go wide. None of the three run wide. Evan Sobiesk with the extra point. Fred Ross with his fourth touchdown of the year. None bigger than that. And now it's time for our Geico Game Recap. Mike Gary said at the beginning, Mississippi State needed to run the ball. They did not do so well in the first half, but better in the third quarter. 120 total yards now. After a safety and a field goal, Amari Cooper with the first touchdown in the ball game. And then Derrick Henry, this one was reviewed. It was initially called a fumble, but it was overturned, and Henry was giving a given a touchdown. Dak Prescott, 262 total yards, but he has been intercepted twice. He did, however, get loose on this 22-yard run. And then just a moment ago, finds Fred Ross, beautifully played. And uh, all of a sudden, Mississippi State down by six. They've really been resilient. I think the point you made, hang in there, hang in there, keep close. Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. In the third quarter, Mississippi State ran the ball in the third quarter more than they have in the three games included. Three years, they haven't run the ball for as much as they ran the ball in the third quarter. That's what opened it up. That allowed the play action passes and then a wonderfully designed play yeah. for the touchdown at the end. And uh, you can see the excitement on the uh, Mississippi State sideline. Undefeated last 12 games. Dan Seven. Mullen has never burned, put more than 300 yards against Alabama in his career at Mississippi State. What did we say, though? If Dak Prescott can bring his level up, they can do it, and he did. Christian Jones with a kickoff return. Tackles. And let's uh, dissect the touchdown. Yeah, it was a thing of beauty, and, and you know for sure that this guy out here is going to play the outside of the field. So you bring one guy in, another guy in, and this guy behind him. It's so well designed because you're taking advantage of what you know Alabama's going to do. And it was perfectly played, perfect throw for seven points. What a great drive by Mississippi State. 19-13, 14-09 remaining. Derrick Henry, the running back, he shared responsibilities with T.J. Yeldon tonight. Here's Henry, gets loose, nine-yard gain. Austin Shepard leading the way. You know who else has been very quiet as we walk Henry right there is T.J. Yeldon. Now, he's played a little bit, but he hasn't been the dominating T.J. Yeldon we remember in the past around here. No, eight carries so far for 40 yards. Henry, 10 carries for 33 yards so far in the game. Corner blitz. Sims. DeAndre White. And let's go back to Adam Zucker for an update in New York. Burn, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Melvin Gordon has broken the FBS single-game rushing record. He has 408 yards against Nebraska. The Badgers have scored 49 unanswered to get the edge in the Big Ten West. Back to you. All right, thank you. How about that? Yeah. Derrick Henry is the running back on first down and 10. Pretty good resolve by Mississippi State. Well, Melvin Gordon, uh, the, the record he surpassed was held by Ladanian Tomlinson when he was at TCU. Just a little pop for the Dope Walker Award that will be decided at the end of this year for the outstanding 
running back in college football. T.J. Yeldon is on the field now. Boy, it's as if Mississippi State can feel the play before it happens. That time it was McKinney, number 50, that just anticipated and filled the hole. Landry 50 just reads it. McKinney finds it, gets it from behind the line of scrimmage. You know, Bernard, it, the success has been so good for Alabama at home and Lane Kiffin at home. They get those huge leads against AM and Florida. This might be the most pressurized drive of Lane Kiffin's career. He has to do it at home for Alabama. Cooper in motion left side, third and five. Four man rush from Mississippi State. Blake Sims steps up, goes across the middle, got it, first down. Just as you're taught. And it's Yeldon. Just as you're taught. Shuffle up in the pocket. Don't be skittish. Keep your eyes downfield and know where your drop-offs are. Can't do it any better than that. You know, because the design play that time from the coach, because everybody gives all the credit to Lane. Oh, you know, everything Lane calls, you know, the Blake just has to throw. Well, that time, the quarterback made the play. Yeldon remains on the field. Gets the handoff, goes left. He's got Fowler leading the way, but tackle made at the 50 by Beniquas Brown, number 42. 11-18 to go. Second down eight. College football playoff committee has rated these teams number one and number five. Here's Sims. Right flat. Stripped away. I thought he dropped it. Did he drop it? I thought he did. I couldn't. He was right. You know, there were players right in my vision, but it looked to me like he dropped it. Oh, but yes. Yep. 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 Thought Love had gotten there, but uh, Amari Cooper, who had three drops last Saturday night in Baton Rouge. And they, they talk about it that says he's a perfectionist, that the drops bother him, especially early in football games. Now, he hadn't had a bad one. He's made, you know, two pretty good plays here uh, early in this game. But let's see if he can come back from that drop pass. Third down eight, Cooper right side. O.J. Howard splits way outside. Three-man rush. Sims has to run. He's pretty good at this. He's really good at this. Well, this is some of the skills that Alabama was tempted early in Blake Sims' career. In fact, he did play running back. Yes, he did. You know, did they have him in the secondary? Was he going to just be an athlete, a slot player, a running back? But you can see right there, that's a first down. He made a first down by staying with his keys on one, and he makes a first down again by using his athletic ability to make a first down with his feet. And that was on third and eight. Now Yeldon is back on the field. Play action. Fowler with the block, but he gives him time to get rid of it deep. Yeldon incomplete. Will Redman, who's one of the hardest-hitting defensive backs in the SEC. Well, it was defended so well by Jay Hughes to begin with and then Redman to finish. Jay Hughes smelled it all the way. He had the running back after the, after the fake. Yeldon goes down the sideline. Jay Hughes, again, a senior, sticks with him, and then Will Redman comes and cleans it up. And for the first time tonight, Tyron Jones, number 20, is on the field. He's in a slot to the left. He's a running back. And then Cooper's outside him, second and 10. Across the middle, she goes incomplete. Cooper. Well, he had DeAndre White that time for a touchdown. If he put a little air on that one, right down the middle, he had DeAndre White. Watch number two right here kind of dip and then go long. Watch this. He's got him. He's got him on a linebacker and an easy touchdown. Just threw the ball too flat. DeAndre White jumped up. He knew he had it. But Blake Sims had to get rid of it too early. Third down, 10. Sims dances right. Oh boy. What a play. Oh boy. What a 
play. That's three of them. Three of them on this drive alone. It's number six bailing out Alabama again. Remember, all the superstars that were supposed to make the plays this year, and it's a quarterback everybody thought was going to get benched for the transfer, Jake Coker. Well, Blake Sims had a huge day here, career high, 445 yards against Florida. That was through the air, and he's dominating this quarter on the ground, and here's Yeldon again. And this is a mash. This is the zone blocking, nice block by Ryan Kelly, number 70, and Yeldon just falls forward. 32 to go. And they will measure. Clock started again. 13th play of the drive coming up. Blake Sims, third and 10, third and eight. Kelly snaps it back. They give it to Yeldon. He bounces to the outside. Great stiff arm. Well, how well has Yeldon been managed in this game? You know, at the beginning of this drive, we were saying, where's Yeldon been? And now we're in the fourth quarter. As Vern just told you, when Mississippi State scores, seems like they're, you know, they put their finger up to their lips, quiet, the momentum's our way. All Alabama does is answer it with a drive of their own. 14th play of the drive, Yeldon down to the six yard line. And taking off, you know, it's gonna take off at least six minutes off the clock. A touchdown here in all this time puts a lot of pressure on Mississippi State. Second down and goal, the Verizon Red Zone stats for the day. They've been inside the 24 times, two touchdowns. And remember, this is where Mississippi State is charged to the number one in the polls. It's because of this red zone defense. Sims looking back at Kiffin. Amari Cooper is making signals of his own. <laughs> like, give me the ball. Signals. <laughs> one with the score the way it is but T.J. Yeldon Blake Sims the play was designed to go to the left and T.J. Yeldon there's nobody better in college football of feeling that point of attack and then jumping to the other side and making the play how's that for an answer for Alabama 76 yards 15 plays and Gary you pointed it out that chewed up 607 off the clock right. I think Alabama is caught with the clock here, with yeah. the play clock down. They had to take a timeout. Well, Nick is out uh, on the field, and he wants to make a beeline for Matt Moore. Now he is. Uh... And, and, of course, you know, you're, you're just obvious math here. You're trying to get to 27. It's a big difference. Sure. Once they decided to go for two, I mean, everybody's confused at how it got so low. Nick's in total control. He's trying to say restart it, but at the last second, he has to burn a timeout to save the try for two. Well, let's watch uh, Blake Sims 
en route to the TJ Yeldon touchdown. Yeah, I remember he had already dropped the ball off to TJ Yeldon for one first down. And then on the next time on third and long, he scrambles for a touchdown. And then again, you called it, Verna Blitz. Remember that? Nobody open. He gets around the corner and tiptoes for another one. This was the quarterback's drive. When you convert third downs, and it's not been easy for Alabama tonight, it's a quarterback's drive. They have the drive for two. First time they have tried a two-point of this year. Sims. Tipped. Knocked away. Intended for Cooper. well-run route and better defended that time by Kendrick Market. Watch Market. Cooper runs a nice route, but Market gets his hand in there. And just talking about those third downs one more time as you watch Cooper go off. On that drive, Alabama converted three third downs. That's more than they had the whole game prior. Yeldon gets the touchdown from seven yards out. 25-13 the score. Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by the Home Depot. K Jewelers. Allstate. And by Sonic. We are back at Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Don't forget later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Most impressive answer, counterpunch by the Crimson Tide. 15 plays. Here's Griffin. Taken at the three by Brandon Holloway, number 10. Well, I'm not surprised. It was Reuben Foster, and he might have gotten shaken up a little bit. He has been a dynamo on special teams. Yep. Wincing as he comes off. Yeah, he's had stingers all year with the way he tackles. He leads with his head. They're very nervous about that. He's a big-time football player, but see how he always takes people on with his head. He was in a black jersey in practice on Thursday, and he winced on that one. First down, 10. Prescott inside. Got it. Delonia Wilson, number one. You know, my guess was that Dak needed to run close to 90 yards and put at least 300 yards total offense from him by himself if they had a chance. He's closing in on that. And now with the score the way it is, he's going to have to do more than that to yep. win. Second down, five. Got him to run you Wilson and he breaks the tackle. There is a flag down. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be on Alabama. On the pass rush, I thought it was a hand of the face mask by Darren Lake, number 95. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 95 of the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. He, automatic first yeah, down. He had him jacked up that time as he was rushing the passer. It was a good, quick pass. Can't blame anybody on that one. You're just in there competing. Number 95 right there, defensive tackle. Just oh, yeah. a little bit of a push on Justin Malone, number 70. But they tack it on. Wow. And so, here's Mississippi State at the 43-yard line, first down 10. Robinson has really been held in check tonight. Here's Prescott. Finds Robinson on the right side as a pass receiver. Reggie Ragler, number 19, first one there. Landon Collins, number 26, was next. Well, Seven field goal's minutes. not going to help Mississippi nope. State. Nope. So as you're calling plays right now, if you're Dan Mullen, you're thinking I'm in four-down territory unless I have to punt, meaning it's fourth and 15 or more. Prescott. 
That might have been Eddie Jackson. I don't know if he tipped it or not, but he was certainly close. Sure did. I yeah. think he did. Eddie Jackson, who is just now getting healthy. Had knee injury in spring. Still looks like he wears a brace on that right side. Ball was just a little high and inside. Not able to be caught by Fred Brown. Nice play by Eddie Jackson. Third down five. Here's this diamond four-man formation. Has not been good to Mississippi State yet all day. Alabama showing blitz. They are not. Here's Prescott. It's hard to get around the edge. Oh my. Hard to get around the edge of Alabama. Nick Perry, fourth down. They ran that once to the short side of the field, but to the long side of the field, look how wide to the outside that time Ryan Anderson is. Could not block him. Good wide nine technique. Very difficult to get outside that. Fourth down, seven. Can't use your timeouts. You Got to run a play. Prescott, right side, got it. Robert Johnson, number 12, first down. Well, I'll tell you that time. A good route, a good throw, but look at the job for this offensive line. Five-man rush. They stop it, and that time, number four gets beat. First and ten. Dak Prescott's time to do a third and fourth down plays. Has to throw it away. Ryan Anderson with the pressure that time, number seven. And it's second down and ten. That does stop the clock. 5.35 to go. You know, these are two of the worst-rated SEC teams for fumbles. Very odd to have two highly placed football teams that fumble the ball as much. There is, they're the worst almost in the SEC, 11th and 12th. This game, not one fumble nope. in the game. Second down, 10. The run you Wilson not on the field on this play. Five-man rush. Got him. And let's see if they give him the first down yardage. Malcolm Johnson. Number six, indeed they do. It's a nice matchup. Malcolm Johnson is basically a wide receiver masquerading as a tight end. Nothing fancy there, but he matched up against Nick Perry, who's not a great cover safety. First down, 10, 518 remaining. We've got a football game here, don't we? There's a lot of pressure out there. Prescott. His receiver fell. Deronya Wilson. I thought he got yanked down on it. Really? So did Deronya Wilson. Let's see if Eddie Jackson gets away with one here. Big on big. No, Eddie Jackson slipped on the play. Actually, Deronya was lucky. He didn't get called for his hand placement. Second down and 10. 5.06 to go. Across the middle, tipped and intercepted. That's the third interception of the night. Landon Collins with the third interception of the year. It was a five-man rush, and it was deflected at the line of scrimmage. I wonder if it was Darren Lake. That's one of our people up here in the booth. They're thinking it might have been number 95. That would be ironic, wouldn't it? Mm. The guy who got the penalty. Let's see if we can figure out who it is here. Easy throw. Couldn't, it might have been 86 to tell you Ashawn the truth. Robinson. Robinson. Yes, I think so. He's a big man, too, I'll tell you. Yes, right as the ball was released, Ashawn Robinson, enough penetration, and the third turnover, the third interception, could be too much for Mississippi State to overcome. We'll move to Arkansas. We will see Ole Miss against the Razorbacks. That's next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time. The SEC on CBS. It all begins with the Auto Trader College Football Today Show at 3 Eastern time. The 
Tough Roberts. Yeah, excuse me, Vern. The toughest thing on a short pass is you can't loop the ball like that. And you've got a receiver here that's five feet, eight inches tall. Okay, when you try to throw to a short receiver over the middle of the field, you have to lower the trajectory, and that's like a, a low field goal kick. If you have a big guy going over the middle, it's much easier to complete those short passes. You can't put any loop on it. And you mentioned during the timeout how ironic it was that Collins was defeated yeah, on the play. Yeah, he really, really was. He yeah. was outside technique. Collins could have had a, you know, been beat on the play. He ended up getting an interception because of that defensive line play. First down, 10. Yeldon. This time, nothing. Wow, Bernardrick McKinney, number 50. We know college football. On this weekend, a year ago, we were doing that Auburn-Georgia game. Remember that? I do. A lot happened at the end of that game. I do. Still yeah. a lot of time. Nick Marshall on 4th and 18, just to refresh your memory. Well, then remember Aaron Murray went all the way back on a oh, yeah. play on the drive. Yeah. As I was saying, it's going to be tough for Mississippi. I said, what am I talking about? I'm in the SEC. <laughs> Anything can happen here in the last four minutes of this game. Second down and 12. Yeldon. on the field and gets the handoff. Yeah, nothing again. Nope. And so 4-10 to go. Save your timeouts. Yes. Mississippi State, save them. They've got all three remaining. Alabama had to use one with a clock issue before the try for two. And remember last week when LSU got the fumble, they ran three straight plays to extinguish Alabama's timeouts. And somebody asked Nick a question like, was that bad play calling? He goes, what are you talking about? I'd have done the same thing. Right now, Nick, I don't think we'll let Lane call a pass. He wants to take off clock. They're down and 12. Well, you can't be right every time. I didn't say it. it it's still fourth down. <laughs> But this is just a whole new world I'm not used to. <laughs> uh, oh, goodness. It worked out. Completion. Yep. But what an incomplete pass is, uh, you know, 40-second change. Sure. And time has been called now by Dan Mullen, hoping to get some magic from Dak Prescott. Interesting. He had so few interceptions the first half of the year. Yes, six and then three in this game. Jeez. Well, Dak Prescott with such high hopes coming into this game. Gary said he thought he had to have 90 yards on the ground. And through the air, he's had the misfortune of having been picked off three times. Yeah, well, one, I think two of them were bad throws. I mean, we all make mistakes, okay? And on this one, they had the one down the middle bad throw. I think that was unfortunate throw. This is just the luck of the throw sometimes. Had an open receiver, you throw the ball, and a defensive player, not only does he bat it, but it flies right to a defender. So in fourth and one, Prescott still, awaits his opportunity. Still time, though. Yep. Still plenty. Oh, they went for it. Catch. Fair catch taken by Fred Ross. Funny thing, they really didn't go for it. Only well, it one, one guy. Yeah, yeah, just one guy. It was Aston Shumpert, number 32, got very close. Yeah, came off right to the right side. Nobody touches him. Lays out and could have gotten that play. Mm. That was not a design block. He went, oh, he kicked it right under his hand. He actually went past the ball. He went past the football. Amazing. There's a player down. Appears to be an Alabama player at the 30-yard line. Dylan Lee. And a reminder that uh, we'll go back to the studio for the Dodge postgame show on CBS Sports. Adam Zucker, Brian Jones, Spencer Tillman back in the studio. Dylan Lee out of Buford, Georgia. That's shaken up last Saturday night in 
Baton Rouge. And here comes Mississippi State. Now they have two timeouts left. They trail by 12 and 318 on the clock. Kirby Smart calls the defensive signals. Dan Mullen, the head coach, calls the plays. And Prescott Robinson are in the backfield. Near side, Janion Lewis. About eight yards, tackle made by Geno Smith. You got to score one before you have an opportunity to score two. Take your time, make first downs, know what you're doing. Robert Johnson would in motion. Now Lewis, they give it to Robinson. He looks for the first down. He pushes and does not get it. Big, big stop. Short of the first down yeah. means time goes off or Mississippi State has to use another timeout. Another half a yard here and the clock stops. Very modest numbers for Robinson today. 12 carries, 37 yards. It's third and one. Out of the backfield, Robinson, he's got the first. He's got plenty. And he moves across midfield. The clock now stops while they reset the chain. That's been about the biggest play for Josh Robinson all night. He's had that one run, but otherwise it's been the drop-off play that has been his most effective weapon from out of the backfield. Clock starts, two minutes to go. Right side. Oh, we needed to get out of bounds. Trey DePriest makes the tackle. 1.45 to go. Second and nine. Prescott pressured. Across incomplete. Intended for Robinson, Landon Collins was defended. Alabama's dropping into a zone, making sure that Dak Prescott is not going to scramble for the first downs, keeping things in front of him. And as you saw that throw from Prescott, it was not accurate. Third and nine. Dropping in the zone again. Prescott gets loose down the sidelines. Oh, did he get close? He made a first down. Yes, indeed. Remember, that's a 10-yard scramble. Got out of the pocket. The one thing Alabama said in their four-man rush, we don't have to sack them all night. We can't let them get outside of our ends. On first down, 123 to go. Prescott across the middle. Clock. Jamie and Lewis, number four. He's to the 21. Clock will stop as they move the chain. Well, this time, Dak said, I don't care how tall you are. You better jump for this one because I'm not throwing this one low. Great catch. 1.13 to go. Across the middle. It's caught again. Jamie and Lewis again. 62 seconds to go. Yeah, I don't wonder when Dan Mullen's going to start using his timeouts now. Here's Prescott. 16 yard line. Yeah, you got to take a timeout here. They don't have time, do they, to line up? It's almost onside. Get the onside kicker. You have no chance. Yes. He's got two timeouts remaining. Thirty-seven seconds remaining. Prescott into the end zone, incomplete. Robert Johnson right at the goal line. Could have completed that ball. Would have taken a perfect throw. Threw it a little high. It wobbled at him. He did not throw a good spiral, and the ball got away from him. Second and goal.
Prescott will run. Gotta take the timeout now. You have no choice. Can't save him now. And he does. 25 seconds remaining. It's 25-13. Five thirteen, Mississippi State undefeated season on the line. They trail Alabama. They have one timeout left. And it's third and goal. See, Mississippi State changed their players so the officials correctly allowed Alabama to substitute. Option. Prescott pitches. 20 seconds to go. They've got one timeout left. Now they use it. I, I, I mean, I... I don't know what to say. I, I'd be throwing the ball in the end zone. I mean, yeah. You know, Dan knows his offense better than I do, but I, I don't understand those last couple throw up plays, and I don't quite get why he saved his timeouts because now they're in a horrible position, even if they do score. They'll be forced to throw a Hail Mary if they get the onside kick. Well, the top-ranked Mississippi State Bulldogs are just seconds away from dropping their first of the year. Oregon open this weekend. Florida State-Miami, big game tonight. TCU did defeat Kansas 34-30. They're number four. Alabama with a victory would... Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're in control. They're, on. they're okay. in. They're in. If they win out. If they win out. I don't think Mississippi State is dead, but they now need help. They will become the biggest Auburn fans in the SEC. Fourth and goal. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Jamie and Lewis. A double layered. Alabama that time they bring a player hook them right here and then bring one behind them kind of a standard pass from trips You get Alabama to set on the goal line They do it all the time and then you complete the pass behind them Usually you do a little taller guy good play by Dak and Lewis. There's the extra point from Sobiesk and so with 15 seconds remaining Lewis from Prescott the margin is five. Twenty-five twenty after the Mississippi State score. Fifteen seconds to go for the season. This will be the first onside kick attempted by Mississippi State. It will also be the first onside kick defended by Alabama. Fifteen seconds remaining. Mississippi State puts it right in the middle so they're not tipping off which direction they're going to go. Alabama would like it to go to the bottom. They put their best ball handler to the bottom of the field. Amari Cooper is yep. right there. Yep. They're going to go away from him. Exposes himself to a heck of a hit. There's a flag down. taking a long time you almost wonder was Alabama offsides did they break the plane the early kick, the kicking team blocked before the ball had gone 10 yards that foul is five yard penalty 
will be tacked on to where Alabama recovered first down. Doesn't mean anything. Take a knee time. Mississippi State hung tight enough, I think, to still be alive in the playoffs, but you can't block until the ball goes 10 yards. And we showed you if Cooper was on the bottom, White was on the top. The two best ball handlers are the guys that are trying to make the play. Everybody else out there is blocking. Two heavyweights. Well, the last time Mississippi State lost, it was to this Alabama team. It was a year ago this weekend. Take a knee, Crimson Tide. Blake Sims leads the Crimson Tide to the win. Nick Saban cannot repress the smile. Tough night for Dak Prescott. He winds up throwing for 290, but he had three interceptions. And he rushed for 75. Let's go down to Allie LaForce with Nick Saban. Coach, what a two weeks this team has had. You go to Death Valley, you win in overtime against LSU, then you come home and beat the number one team in the country. How is this team always able to rise to the occasion and get the win? Well, you know, I'm really proud of the way our guys competed in this game today. We made plays when we had to. This is a great victory for our team. It's a great victory for our fans. It's great for the state of Alabama, so we're really, really pleased and happy. Mississippi State's got a great team. And, you know, when you play the number one team in the country, you know they know how to win. I expected them to come back in the second half, but our guys made the plays when they needed to. We talked so much about Blake Sims and what a better quarterback he is at home, but it was the defense that came up with three big interceptions. How proud of you were of the defense? I thought the turnovers were huge in the game, but Blake made two third down conversions in what amounted to be the winning drive in the game that were huge. So he makes plays when he has to, too. Hey, Blake, come on in. Congratulations on an exciting win. You make the big plays when you need to, and you play awesome at home. What is it like and what does it feel like to beat the number one team in the country on your home field? I'm just, I'm just happy for this team, man. And being at home, I wouldn't rather do it anywhere else but here. Look at these fans. They stuck in there for 60 minutes with us. And I give all the credit to the defense. How many times can you know that a defense stops the number one team in the nation when we have four um, three and outs four times? We just happy. I'm just happy for the team, happy for the old line and for the receivers. They play their hearts out. I'm glad we got the win. You said you were playing this game for one very special fan. That's your daughter, Kyla. You said you wanted to be able to go home and tell her daddy played on the biggest stage and beat the best team in the country. What will you tell her after this one? I'll ask her how I look. <laughs> Did I run fast? Did I play good? Grade me. Try to grade me and see what she says to me. I'm about to go over here and celebrate with her and uh, just love her and stay with her tonight. Well, if I have anything to say, I hope she gives you that A+. Plus. Thank you so much. Thanks, Blake. Yes. <laughs> How nice. He bailed him out. Nick Saban was exactly right. Remember the third down play and that drive, three of them. He dropped it off to Yeldon and then two on scrambles. More in that drive than they had the whole game prior. Nick nailed it. Well, amazingly enough, that leads us to the Napa plays of the game. <laughs> you do that well. Presented by Napa Auto Parts. Here's Blake Sims, third down and 10. Back, nobody open, he tucks it. He does this so well. And you see the yellow line, that's a first down. And then he did it one more time, third and eight. He goes to the right, watch the yellow line, just does get the first down. And then T.J. Yeldon, Seven yards away, little step to the right into the end zone. That turned out to be the winning touchdown. That was a 76-yard drive in 15 plays. What did we say? Everything goes through Alabama in this conference. That's still the main story. They either win it or the team that wins it beats them. Tonight, they didn't beat them. 25-20. And keep in mind, the resilience of Mississippi State. They were down 19-0 in the first half. But they came back, and they will be a factor before it's all over. For Gary Danielson and Allie the Force, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Tuscaloosa. Our final score, 25-20, Crimson Tide.
The Dodge Post Game Show is up next after these messages and a word from your local station.